What if everything you've been taught about seasonality is wrong? What we're looking at here is the chart of the week, and uh, we're basically calling this conditional seasonality, or basically uh, what we look at, what it looks like if you track seasonality across different types of market regime. So you've probably heard of some of the old chestnut market seasonality wisdoms and sayings, you know, things like the Santa Claus rally, the year-end rally, <clears throat> a lot of talk about that at the moment, uh, sell in May, the October effect, and so on. All of these things are generally based on statistical analysis of historical movement and stock prices. And the data, you know, certainly seem to show some repeatable and even perhaps reliable seasonal patterns. And there's even been studies done which confirm the intuition um, and market aphorisms. Like there's one study, I'll probably link to it in the description, that notes the sell in May effect um, and notes that it works basically across every market in the world, or every stock market. Uh, but, you know, I got curious. And uh, the, the answer is kind of there on the screen. But here was my question. Does seasonality look different in different market regimes? Probably a question worth asking, given that we're basically in the middle of a bear market um, as, I, as I speak. So... To answer this question, I re-ran the usual seasonality analysis, which is where you uh, basically take an average of the daily price moves, um, you know, across all the years of the, uh, the the sample. So by business day, that's using well, that's the approach that we're looking at here. Um, but I basically uh, used a quick and rough proxy for bull versus bear markets. Uh, defining that here is when the market closed the year up versus down. So it's a simple, quantitative, and easy to program rule, um, and which, which probably means it's imperfect, um, but close enough. Uh, the results surprised me. First, what should probably be unsurprising, the bull market seasonality curve so that green line in the chart there, it trended up across the year. And, you know, that's basically what's supposed to happen in a bull market. Prices are basically going up. That's pretty much the definition. And equally, the bear market seasonality curve trended lower across the year. Again, you know, that's pretty much the definition of a bear market. What was surprising, though, was to see that that old sell in May effect was simply not present during bull markets, and basically only really a thing during bear markets. So if we look at that chart there, we can see the, that green line is pretty much just a consistent uptrend with, you know, perhaps a couple of little divots along the way, but no real um, period of downward movement, you know, no sustained period of downward movement or, you know, sort of ranging prices, which you see, you do see in the all markets line and the black line there, you do actually see kind of the, that sell and may effect kind of working in, in regards to the fact that the, the market kind of goes sideways throughout that period there. But, yeah, let me repeat this, you know, the, and I think this is quite intriguing because it tips one of those conventional market wisdoms on its head by just taking a different perspective on the data. I always recommend that, um, you know, when I'm talking to young analysts um, or junior analysts is that you really need to explore the data. Don't just, um, you know, take do a regression or, you know, some econometric statistical analysis. Um, get in and explore the data. You know, take different angles on it. And um, when you do that, you're going to get different insights. But again, yeah, the sell in May effect is very clear in the bear markets there. And in fact, you know, you basically, again, that's the thing. Southern May only works during bear markets, um, historically speaking. Um, and one kind of facetious takeaway about that is that the analysis is pretty much saying in a bull market, you know, the green line, just keep buying. In a bear market, just keep selling. Um, again, half in jest there. And um, actually, one more chart, and so we'll dip down to here. And this one is showing the same analysis for bear market seasonality, but also including another quantitative rule for deciding whether it was a bear market or not, just for completeness. 
And this, this one is basically looking day by day. Was the market trading below its 200 day moving average? Again, this is a rough and imperfect proxy for bear market, but it largely echoes the same sort of seasonal pattern that we saw in the original chart. It's a good check and balance on that original method, and again, it gives an insight into how markets have traded in the past during bear markets or downtrends, uh, whichever you want to call it. And one last thing, in case anyone was wondering, the reason why back in that original chart, the all year seasonality curve uh, looks quite similar to we'll, we'll look at it looks quite similar to the bull markets curve um, you know it's certainly a lot closer to that than the bear markets one is that during that 1965 to 2021 period there were more bull markets than bear markets so bear markets as defined by the market being down on the year happened 26 percent of the time um, and when you define it using the 200-day moving average definition, it was about 30% of the time. And, you know, that by itself is quite interesting for the, you know, the long-term buy and hold crew. You know, basically, um, the takeaway there is that 70% of the time, well, over 70% of the time, the market is in a bull market. So, you know, kind of like a little bit of evidence for the whole buy and hold thing. But before we close out, I guess I um, should also note that the key takeaway um, in terms of the current backdrop would be that if we are indeed in a bear market this year, then we shouldn't be getting too excited about a year-end rally because seasonal year-end rallies statistically only happen during bull markets or when the market ended the year up and when the market was above its 200-day moving average. So you know, none of those things kind of really apply. Uh, and um, yeah, taking the chart literally, we can expect in, uh, if we go back to that bear market chart, we can expect in November, December, basically volatile ranging price action at best. So the key point there is seasonality trends in the stock market look very different in bull versus bear markets, which is so interesting because it confounds some of those conventional wisdoms. Now, one more thing. So I posted these charts up on Twitter and a lot of people were asking, well, very interesting, but what about midterm election years since we're in one at the moment and uh, very close on the horizon there? Um, there's some, you know, I basically rerun the analysis, uh, same method as for the year over year one. Uh, and in this one, actually looking at only years where it was a midterm election. Um, and so we've got the same again, um, same filters. And you can see there that in a bull market, a midterm election is very good, is um, a very positive thing for the last quarter of the year. Um, for all markets, it's kind of, yeah, slightly positive. For bear markets, it's, yeah, definitely not something to get excited about, you know. Well, arguably already had kind of this um, October, early November uh, hope rally. Um, and then the rest of November, December looks to be either down, downward trending or, you know, it's sort of a, a, a mild negative bias. So again, you know, if you wanted to get excited about a Q4 rally, you have to believe that it's a bull market. Um, and strictly speaking, you know, the rule for this chart is that the market finishes up. It's, <laughs> it's a long way to go for the market to be able to do that. Um, but yeah, so pretty much the conclusion is uh, don't bank on a Q4 rally. And actually, thinking about seasonality in general, don't bank on seasonality You know, to be the one and only thing that's uh, saving your strategy. Um, I I've noted this before, is that you use seasonality as either prompting information to prompt you to go and have another look at all the different, you know, more meaningful pieces of data, um, or use it as finishing information. You've already got a strong case with, you know, strong data points, and uses it to raise conviction or finish the timing. So, you know, overlaying that on my perspective at the moment, all the indicators that I'm looking at still say recession, bear market, 
risks still skewed to the downside. So then looking at the fact that the bear market seasonality signal there is saying don't expect much, I'd not expect much for the next few months um, for the you know into year end. So yeah, overall pretty interesting um, conclusion, pretty unique perspective and um, definitely the type of thing that you should expect to see in the chart of the week. And if you want to subscribe to that, it's free. Go to uh, topdowncharts.substack.com or head over to topdowncharts.com and uh, go ahead and subscribe.